Hello everybody. I have a bunch of 90s NASCAR boxes in front of me and I plan on opening each one of these on my channel over the next few weeks. These are all from my personal stash that I've acquired over the last few years since I got back in it collecting NASCAR cards. 90s and 88 and 89 NASCAR cards are my sweet spot. They're what I really like, what I really enjoy, particularly the 96 through 97 press pass relic cards. Sheet metals, double burners in particular are my favorite. I like the rubber cards, the, st the history behind them personally and what they meant for the hobby. And they're just really important to me. And I like collecting them, even if I have duplicates of the same card, I just really like collecting those, those years. And I thought it would be really fun to open up some of the boxes where I have a chance of hitting some of those cards, as well as just opening up some other boxes of cards that I really liked at the time, like 95 Premier Plus, um, and what else, you know, the Zenith, I was really a fan of, I've opened a few boxes of those already, some Upper Deck product, and, you know, hopefully I'll be able to get some cards that I don't have for sets that I'm trying to build, and also I'll acquire some cards from these boxes that I can send off to get autographed through the mail, because that's another big piece of my collecting experience. So this video, I'll just go through each box that we'll be looking forward to opening together on the channel in the next few weeks, and I'll go over you know the stated odds on the box and do a walk around of the box. And then at the end, I'll probably open up the 96 press pass packs and then maybe some of the uh, 97 uh, pinnacle totally certified i do have a certified box back there and i thought they were the same i thought these these packs right here came from this box back here and i don't think they did i don't think it's the same i don't think it's the same exact product and still we'll We'll open these up today, those packs, and we might not open the box. I brought that just for reference. So here we go. I had to organize things a little bit better so I could show you the individual boxes. 1995 Max Premier Plus. I remember finding out about the Premier Plus that released in 1993, which was the same year that Top's Finest also was released. And this is a chromium type product. Looks very similar to Tops Finest, Tops Chrome, Bowman Chrome, that kind of stuff. Really great for getting autographs with Sharpie markers. The coating just really takes well to the to the Sharpie. And although the coating takes really well, it, it's kind of a busy card. So we'll see if we'll actually get some good cards to send out to get autographed. And I remember buying the majority of these. I probably bought five or six boxes in 1990 probably 1996, maybe I bought one box in 1995, but these were also some of the boxes that you could find in retail uh, the year or so after they released. And they were only, I think these were only $20 a box as opposed to the $30 a box for like Press Pass or Upper Deck or something like that. And so what, let's see, featuring exclusive Chromium technology, collect all six randomly inserted subsets of your favorite NASCAR stars, including Chase the Champion, five NASCAR Super Truck cards, because Super Trucks came out in 1995, I believe. NASCAR, five license to drive cards, five Series 2 preview cards, a top five top hat, and nine pace setter cards. So there weren't memorabilia cards or autographs available in this set. I believe the 95 medallion had a Jeff Gordon autograph and you know like I can't recall again I'm just pulling this stuff from memory so I can't exactly recall if if that was the case but Max did have some autographs at, at one point or another and this was just they're really touting their chromium product and it was really beautiful set so I'm, I'm really excited to open this I have a few more of these so I'm really really excited to have this on the on the agenda 1996 Road to the Cup from Upper Deck. This was a really interesting product because in 1995 was the first year that NASCAR uh, or Upper Deck did NASCAR cards. And of course, Dale Earnhardt having all the, you know, 
marketing genius that he had and licensing for his name and trademarking his signature and his likeness and all that stuff ahead of a lot of the other NASCAR drivers, he was not in the first product. So they had to work out an agreement until they could get a Dale Earnhardt card in 1996. And from what I remember is that they had a card made up in 1995 and it was a Dale Earnhardt card and maybe it was number three or something like that, probably, probably was. And they weren't able to release it. You know, I don't know if they had printed it. I think they had just designed it. So they, in 1996, they, or so in 1995, they couldn't release the Dale Earnhardt Sr. card. In 1996, they came out with Road to the Cup. And card number 301, which I believe was just a continuation of the 1995 series, it was a Dale Earnhardt Sr. card of him waving, and it was a short print. And you could get that in the 1996 box. So that's really what we're looking for out of this. In addition to, let's see, what does it say? Road of the Cup, 10 cards per pack. So this would be considered a, I believe this is a retail box because the hobby boxes, I believe had 40 packs or something like that. So 10 cards per pack plus two free bonus cards, or this would be considered maybe like a blaster box. What a blaster box would be today. 16 packs per box. Look for hot new inserts. Diary of a Champion, Jeff Gordon, because he won in 1990. Uh, 1995, he won his first NASCAR Cup Series champion. 2D Jeff Gordon commemorative cards, all new top three predictor cards. And I believe the predictors, man, I, you know, I don't have upper deck inserts memorized as much as I do the press pass stuff. So let's see if we get the odds back here. All right, box contains random assortment of upper deck motorsports cards, 150 cards in the set. Odds of finally following inserts are Diary of a Champion, one every six packs, Top Three Predictor, one every 11 packs, Racing Legends Collection card, one every 23 packs, Leader of the Pack, one every 35, 2D Jeff Gordon Commemorative card, one every 71, and that's it. So what I'm really looking for out of this is one of those Earnhardt cards, and then hopefully some co cool cards to send off to get autographed through the mail. So I'm, I'm excited. Hopefully we can pull Earnhardt out of there because that's a really great card. That's his first upper deck card. So that's a really important one. 1997 Victory Circle by Upper Deck. And when I mentioned vintage before, the, you know, the Road to the Cup had it on there. So this would have been $30 sitting in retail along with all the retail packs where you could just, you know, walk up. They'd have boxes open and you could just buy single packs or you could buy an entire box from a previous year. So what you could get, look for Piece the Action Race Worn Uniform cards. Now these are really awesome. I've never pulled one out of a pack and I think they're really difficult to get. Upper Deck had really high odds to, to pull the memorabilia cards because it was like a case hit uh, back in the 90s to get a memorabilia card at a press pass and I think one every one or two cases for upper deck so look for uniform cards eight cards per pack 36 packs per box awesome new features and card technologies bring you closer to the racing than ever before all new predictor okay all right, let's see what we got here Motorsports Predictor Complete Official Rules. I think this was similar to the Cup Chase program that Press Pass had out where if you got the the card out of a pack, you could mail it in if they won the championship at the end of the year, and then you would get a whole special set. In Press Pass, it was like die cut sets or well, at least in 97, it was like a, a blue foil card that you would get and it had a cup champion or a cup you know a trophy in the in the background of the of the card but it was a full card and then if you actually got the winning card which in 1997 that was Jeff Gordon again you would be able to send that blue card in and they would send you a full 25 or 20 card set whatever the number was die cut gold uh, 
cup chase cards and it was really cool and i have one of those sealed one of the gold die cut cards and or die cut sets and they're they're really nice they're really fun to fun to chase so that was a really cool program that they had so i think that's what the predictors are too so two ways to participate promotion open a resonance okay program card structure when you submit a winning predictor card you will receive tv cell of the driver on the front of the card odds of receiving tradable predictor card depends entirely upon the performance of the driver okay so it was similar and you would get an actual piece of the film from the tv broadcast how to redeem predictor which is really cool so i've seen some of those on there and I, i'm or i've seen some of them on ebay and you know in the past so that's really cool so you would get a card that had a piece of a cell on there let's see Minimum winning predictor, how to redeem. Predictor trade cards are only redeemed between February 97 and January 98. Claim submitted before or after this date will not be accepted. Predictor polar, please, along with $2 check or money order. Hmm. Card claim are subject to verification by Nova Marketing Services and Independent Judging Authority. It's not responsible for by participating. So they had to win or place at a certain point. I, I actually don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't actually, it doesn't actually say complete official rules. Oh, and an individual goal for the driver, the driver depicted on the front of the card achieves the ex it achieves or exceeds the goal indicated on the front of the card then the card may be traded in for a special tv cell card of that driver for a chance to receive a motorsports predictor card legibly print your name complete address da, 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 envelope yeah so okay so there'd be stated rules on each individual card so that's cool so we'll be looking for uh, the predictors won't really do us any good at this point because we can't trade them in for the TV cell cards, but we're looking for, uh, we're looking for the race use memorabilia cards out of this product. And my buddy Chris sent me this box, so I'm really excited to finally be able to open it. I worked at a baseball card shop with Chris back in the '90s. He's been one of my good friends ever since, and it's been great reconnecting with him over trading cards over the last four years. And look for authentic race use. So this is 1998 Motorsports, Upper Deck Motorsports cards. So let's see, introducing Power Deck, which is a, like a little CD that you could put into your CD player. Look for authentic race use piece of the engine card inside. And I think that was like a piston ring or gasket, something like that, or head gasket, something like that. So that's really cool. And that's what we'll be looking for out of this also any cool cards that we'll be able to send in for ttm or you know jeff gordon or dale earnhardt cards this box contains random assortment of cards so 150 card set days of speed cards one every four 20 points leaders one every three packs instant win cards won't do us any good. I guess Upper Deck's still around. Chances of them having their stuff slimmed in on. Whatever, 69 packs. Let's see. Can't really. 10 sports of brilliant cards. Whatever, 84 packs. Five pieces of the engine cards. Whatever, 999 packs. Jeez, old man. Authentic piece of race engine. Five autograph cards individually, hand number to 250 are uniquely die cut and feature authentic signature from the hottest drivers in racing today. Holy smokes. <clears throat> 32 days of speed. Gold cards. Crash numbered one of 97. Power deck audio cards, one every 52. So there's a blue, black, and a gold version. Wow, gold is one every 3,600 packs. Exclusive Rusty Walls interviews you can hear. Okay, very cool. Man, holy smokes. Oh, no, I don't think I read. Oh yeah, I can't, because the odds 
on the back of this vintage box. It's covering. Let's see. Wow. So that was a security tag. I'll just put that sucker right up there. Let's see. All right. So to get back to the 97 box and get the odds. 10 championship reflections, one every two packs. 10 generation excitement cards, one every 11 packs. Predictors, one every 21 packs. Crowning achievements, one every 35. 15 driver's seat cards, one every 69 packs. Oh, I got a pretty good shot at that. Put your hands behind the wheel. Piece of the action cards, one every 699. Then a piece of race worn uniform, so one every 699. So driver's seat cards, one every 69 pack. So that would be awesome to pull a driver's seat card. But then again, getting the whew, every 699 packs to get a fire suit card. That's that's crazy. So that's how many packs are in here. Thirty six packs. So that's almost one every 20 boxes. So that would probably be a case crazy so anyway let's get back to this and then yeah and then one every 990 packs and then there are 24 packs per box so my gosh one every 40 boxes man that's crazy for this to get one of the piece of the engine cards so that's crazy people don't understand how difficult it was to pull a memorabilia card or an autograph card back in the day tracks it was you know 94 is like one every couple of boxes and then press pass you know was one every few boxes to get an autograph card and a memorabilia was one every one every case for a long time and it's just pretty crazy so all right moving on to the pinnacle stuff so in one of the groups or the lots that i bought a few years ago there was some individual packs and 97 pinnacle totally certified and i thought that it was the same thing as this as the pinnacle certified and i don't know if it necessarily is so hopefully somebody out there that's watching again i'm just pulling this all from my memory i don't believe this is the same product and you know reasons are because it's one says totally and the other one doesn't so I'm, I never opened, I don't think I opened a box of 97 Pinnacle back in the day, the certified, because I, th I think it was really expensive. These boxes here were, I think, like 70 or $80, 95 and 96. And then I think these were in the 100 plus range. And I was just so enamored with Press Pass at the time. Pinnacle kind of just went, went to the side. And over the years, I've had singles. I just don't remember ever opening packs or a lot of packs. So... I'm not going to open this up to, to, to test that out to see if these are the same things. And I will be opening these packs. So let's see. Totally certified. Look for platinum gold insert cards. Three cards per pack. Let's see. Platinum red. Why isn't it focusing? Two every pack. Platinum blue, one every pack. Platinum gold, one every 37 packs. Straightforward. Not a whole lot of, not a whole lot going on. Just, just parallels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 11, 12, 13, 13. So it's a little more than half a box. So we'll be opening these up later in the video along with these press pass packs that I have. So I have another box of the 1996 Zenith, Pinnacle Zenith. I've already opened a few, couple of these on the channel. I'm searching for that Seven Wonders Dale Earnhardt card. After this box, if we don't hit it, then I will stop. <laughs> and I have more of the 95 boxes and I had such a great hit, group of hits last time, I'm not gonna open up another one. So. This will be the last 1996. They're just beautiful. They're just like, you know, bars of gold. They're just really nice to have sitting, you know, if the light hits them right, they're just very beautiful boxes. And the odds there, 
artist proof, which is just the foil artist proof, not the 24 karat gold artist proof, or the 14 karat that they're promoting in the pack, inside each pack. And I don't understand still what the difference is. I've never seen a 14 karat gold artist proof set that they are promoting inside this box. And I have had and seen plenty of the 24 karat gold cards that are out there. So if anybody has any more information about that, about what the true difference is, or if they made a production, you know, if they decided to produce 24 karat gold sets instead of 14 karat gold for some reason, let me know, because that would be good information to have. Artist proof one every 24 pack, so one a box, highlights, one every 11 packs, champion salute, one every 90 packs, seven wonders, one every 6,000 packs. I'll take a champion salute, and there are plenty of Earnhardt's and Gordon's in here, so it's always fun. You know, you're guaranteed to get some get some really good stars out of these, these boxes, so it's always fun. And I really want that seven wonders card for my collection. So this is the 96 Pinnacle Zenith. And then, I don't remember ever opening up a box of these. These are the 1996 Pinnacle Speed Flicks. And these, it says, the only motion card in NASCAR. The following year, Press Pass came out with Action Vision, which is down here. We'll be opening up a box of that. And these aren't necessarily motion cards. They're, from what I have, I have a PSA 10 artist proof of Dale Earnhardt, and then a I think another artist proof, which is like a PSA 5 or a 6 of Earnhardt. It's just one picture that if when you rotate the card, it'll turn into another picture. Usually his number or something like that. So it'll be just a static picture. And when you flip it, it'll transition into the other picture where the action vision cards are actually like two or three seconds of footage put into a card, which I think is much more unique. And still, they, these are really cool looking cards. And... I believe this is going to be the first time I've ever opened a box of these. I don't even know if I've ever had a set of these. Because again, 1996 hit. Everything else went out the window. It was press pass. Everything was press pass. If you want a piece of the action, which I did, you got to get a press pass. So this will be cool. 1996 in the other pinnacle... It's a gray and gold box, which I have some, and I'm not going to open them because I learned from Logan from NASCAR podcast that the Bill Elliott fire suit cards were actually redemption cards that they had in there. So opening one of those boxes, trying to hunt for a Elliott fire suit card would be uh, pointless. And over the years, I've had tons of those cards. So let's see. So in motion cards, 48 packs. ProMotion, one every nine packs. Artist Proof, one every 24 packs. So maybe there are film cards where there's actual seconds of footage on these. I just don't know. And we'll be we'll be learning that together when I open this box up. <clears throat> and the Artist Proof cards, one every box. You have to open 87 boxes in order to essentially get one of each of the cards, assuming, which I'm sure they didn't. But if they just put one, you know, if they took a stack and they had the set, and they put one card in each box, then you'd have to open 87 boxes to get the full set. Theoretically speaking, each card is one in every 87 boxes. And that's, you know, 2,000 packs or something like that to get an Earnhardt or whatever. So the fact that I have the Earnhardt, which I'll show when I open this box, and a PSA 10 artist proof, one every 2,000 packs or something, that's a pretty dang rare card. And I even have another one of his artist proofs from this set that's a like a PSA 5 or something. And just having slabbed Earnhardt cards I think is a good idea because he's the Michael Jordan of NASCAR. And having his cards and slabs just is really fun. I think it's really, I think it's a ton of fun. And Jeff Gordon, in my opinion, being like the Kobe Bryant. So, and then, you know, um... Richard Petty being like Babe Ruth. So those are my comparisons. Anyway, moving on to, uh, we'll skip. We'll go over to this side over here. A year ago, I was at the Dallas Card Show and I found a guy that had a case of 
these what appear to be retail return 1994 tracks boxes some of them had the top on them none of them were factory sealed and they the majority if not all had the anco which i believe is just a gas station logo uh price tag on them 30 packs in a box and for the most part they were all full just full boxes i think they were just retail returns and that was cool and the guy got them for a good deal come to find out logan and val were on my heels like either the day before or I was on their heels the day after and they bought a case from the same guy and they opened a bunch and they said they got, I think they said they got a bunch of uh, the cover cards, the autograph cover cards out of this because it was one every couple of boxes to get an autograph card. It doesn't say the stated odds. Limited prototype cards, yeah. And so anyway, I opened some packs and then I sold some packs Maximum 3,500 each card autographed, randomly inserted in foil pack. So it's just randomly inserted. You know, there's no, and the thing about these is that there are a lot of them, it's going to be cringy. They're like just stuck together and that's unfortunate. And then for the most part, they're okay if you just give them a little flex, because I opened some of these boxes before, give them a little flex, the cards will, you know, they separate and let's just hope. And I think Series 1 and Series 2 had different autographs in them. You know, like, you can get a Gordon out of one, but you can't out of the other. So, randomly inserted, no stated odds. So, this will be a fun one to open up. And then, I have this partial box of 96 Crown Jewels Elite, which Wheels made some really wild cards in the 90s, especially when they started adding all the animal hides and you know shark skin and shark teeth and all that stuff they wild designs they really went for it and similar to the totally certified packs it was just in a group of boxes that i bought and you know it was just partially open i never opened any packs or anything from it and we'll just see what we can get so these had diamond cards in them i think the dale earnhardt seven diamond and seven gem card is in here let's see yep seven diamond right there Parallel birthstone cards, crown signatures, let's see, dual jewels, birthstones of a champion, seven Earnhardt, seven diamond card, gemstone redemption, proximate odds, citrine, one every seven packs, uh, seven packs, crown signatures, amethyst, one every 24 packs, diamonds in the rough, sapphire, one every 48, dual jewels, Dual Jewel Gamut, one every 48. Dual Jewel Amethyst, one every 96. Birthstones of a Champion, one every 192. Earnhardt, seven diamonds, one every 384 packs. Gemstone Redemptions. The Redemptions won't do us any good, unfortunately. And that was a really cool box, too. I think they tried to make it like a jewelry box as much as you possibly could, make a trading card box like a jewelry box back then but you got let's take these packs out i think there are different color packs in here and i don't know exactly why they're different colors but these were in the same box always like that that was just to represent the different kind of jewels that they had available i'm not 100 percent sure uh, anyway you got some Little samples of the cards. I believe they had like uh, like gem cards where they were like a green foil or a blue foil or a red foil, different versions depending on if it was retail or hobby. Limited edition collectible cards. Really cool. So the box, the packs you have the gray, purple, and teal or a turquoise or green pack, and then you have kind of the red blue and gold pack which is really cool so let's see if there's a difference five cards per pack five diamond tribute edition hobby edition so these must be from different boxes and whoever had these had a couple open boxes maybe it was a store i don't know 
then they just kind of shuffled them all together since they were similar looking. 96 super premium race cards, super premium race cards. So hard to read this. Doesn't actually give odds. Jules, Birthstone, Earnhardt, seven gems, Earnhardt, seven diamonds. Okay. Sapphire, randomly. Okay, the top one, Citrine, parallel cards, Birthstones of a Champion, Diamonds in the Rough, Sapphire, Gamut, and Amethyst, Dual Jewels, Earnhardt, seven diamonds, Gemstones, redem Redemption Game. Randomly inserted Sapphire and Emerald. Parallels, Birthstones of a Champion, Dual Jewels, uh, Gar Garnet, Amethyst, and Sapphire, Earnhardt, seven gems. Okay, so this has seven gems. This has seven diamonds. So the gem card, which is numbered out of 1,500, I think, could possibly be in here. Seven diamonds, which is numbered out of 300, could possibly be in here. So that's cool. So that's cool. So we'll see what the differences are when, when we open these up. It's pretty neat. This is going to be a fun couple of weeks. It's going to take me a while to open all these boxes. All right, and then I have a few packs of 1996 Press Pass. I bought a probably, I think it was like 200 packs or something because, you know, there were retail returns back in the day where you could, you know, they the retail the retailers would send their packs back, kind of like magazine subscriptions to the, to the distributor or something, and they would... The distributor would then re give them a credit or something, kind of like magazines, and then they would get more packs or something like that. And so you could, back then, you could buy the retail returns from, you know, certain hobby shops would have deals with the with the marketing company or whoever the distribution company, and they'd get hundreds or thousands of these packs, and they'd sell them for like a buck or something like that, just loose packs. And I would do that in the early 2000s. I would buy, you know, hundreds of packs, press passes, wheels at a time. And I would sell them at the trade shows. And it was really cool because I did just have tons of five-row boxes of unopened packs. And it was really cool. I'd sell them at the show. People, I remember Dave Gomer with Dave's Pit Stop, who was somebody that I remember from the 90s and then got to work alongside at the shows in, 20, in the early 2000s, early mid-2000s. And uh, he pulled a petty autograph on one of the packs, and it was really cool to see that. And a lot of the people, I didn't know what they pulled because they wouldn't, you know, they'd take them home or I'd sell them online or something. I wouldn't necessarily hear or see what they got. So anyway, I still have like 100 packs left of this press pass stuff. And the unfortunate thing is when I opened a few packs, a lot of them were stuck together. So I don't know if the, the person that kept these, let's see, they're real, it's unfortunate. And... real crunchy so I don't know what kind of condition they kept them in if there's a rubber card in here I don't know we will see but it is what it is and over here let's see actually all right so the last stack 1997 press pass this is just the base edition usually released in January of the year so a lot of the times they'll have like preview photos of you know, the, if there's a new driver change, it'll just be pictures of them standing with the car, maybe at an informal, uh, you know, revealing of the car or a press event or something. So, like, you know, when, for instance, the 96 Press Pass Premium or the Press Pass had picture of Michael Waltrip next to the Wood Brothers car because that was the first year he drove that car. He was driving the 30 Pennzoil car in 1995. And then for them to get a product out in 1996, they had to, and they wanted to have relevant photos, so they took pictures of Michael Waltrip. I think he was just in like jeans and a polo next to the Wood Brothers car. So, and then they would have previous year photos in that product. And then, you know, pictures from the championship and all that stuff, championship battle at the end of the year. So anyway, on the front of this box, you'll see that's the rubber card they had. It was a redemption. It was the 
rubber was huge. You could never put it in a pack unless they did something like the M-Force. I don't think M-Force went over that well as far as, you know, at retail or hobby or, or at hobby because I think it was a hobby exclusive. So anyway, for them to put that card in a pack was just not going to fly. You'd be able to tell that card was in every, every time that card was inside a pack, you'd be able to tell just by looking at it because it was so thick. So they did a redemption program. So unfortunately, this box, if we get a redemption card, that's just going to suck <laughs> for a rubber card because there's nothing we can do with it. And they did have autographs in this. And this is similar to a blaster box. I think there's only 10 packs in this. They did have, I believe, full retail boxes and full hobby boxes. I do have a couple hobby that have the 24 packs or 20 packs, whatever it was. And this one is just was one that was sold at, as you can see, KB Toys for 20 bucks. So two bucks a pack, six levels of inserts. I like the, the new design, the bold design that they did. It's very 90s. You get burning rubber, authentic race used tire, improve for 97 on foil, nick to chrome cards, clear cuts, oh, nick to chrome, whatever. Victory lane, hollow foil cards, banquet bound, hollow foil cards of the top 10 96 cup drivers. An insert in every pack because they had parallels in there which are like torquers or scorchers, and we could possibly find that Chase Elliott card of him in the car with Bill Elliott, which is cool, especially if we find it in the blue, which I believe is a torquer, and the red, which was a scorcher, and I believe any retail product had the blue, Hobby had the red. So that would be cool to find either an autograph card, we could get Jeff Gordon, we could get Dale Earnhardt, or we could get one of those Bill Elliott uh, uh, Chase Elliott cards sitting in Bill's seat when he's like, two years old or a year old or something. And I believe there is some error cards that exist in this product, so that would be cool too, especially with that Chase Elliott. So this is a really cool product. Then we have another from 97. This is 97 Press Pass VIP, which contained also chance at autographs, some cool die cut and regular headgears, and then race use sheet metal. So the first year with M-Force, it was quite the ordeal. The card was really thick. It was totally different. They had to have different packaging. The boxes were huge. 97, they came back with a much sleeker, slimmer card. And there was a kind of an insert over the sheet metal cards when you pull one. It was just a white cardboard with a little die cut cut out for the sheet metal. So it would be, the card would be able to, the sheet metal would be able to not rub on the other cards in the pack. And essentially the other cards wouldn't rub on the sheet metal really because it had a nice real crystal clear coating on it. So this is a really cool set to have. I wasn't too crazy about the base cards. They did have the explosive variation, which was like a blue and red kind of like heat lava looking concept design. Anyway, it was, it's, it's cool. It's an all around cool product. I opened several boxes of these in the past. I remember I bought one of the repackaged, you know, it had like 10 NASCAR packs in one of those clamshell uh, boxes where they'd show like a preview of what's, you know, they'd have diff three different stacks of packs and you could see a 1997 Press Pass VIP pack in there. And I remember I bought it for I think 10 or 20 bucks and I opened it, it had a Terry Labonte sheet metal card in, in the pack. So that was really fun. Let's see. So when I had these together, I could tell the difference between a hobby box and a retail box. I think one of them had 20 packs and one had 24. Precious metal cards, certified autographs. Oh yeah, the Knights of Thunder, the Sam Bass cards are cool. Those are all foil. You could get a silver version or a uh, gold version. Ring of Honor, you could get regular or a die cut, and same with headgear, regular or a die cut. So let's look at the odds. Precious metal, one every 384 packs, so it's like likely a case or a case and a half. Certified autographs, one every 72, so that was one every three boxes. Sam Bass, that's oh, kind of hard to see. One every 30, gold was one every 120, so one every five boxes. Yep. Ring of Honor, one every 10 packs. Die cut, one every 30. Headgear, 
uh, one every 16, die cut one every 40, explosive, yeah, one every pack, so the explosives are the parallels. So, 97 press pass VIP, really looking forward to opening this one too. And I will be right back. All right, then we have the 1997 press pass premium, which is one of my favorite collectible products of all time because of the clean design, the in, I love the inserts, I, everything about this product I love. In particular, the 1997 Press Pass Premium Double Burners. First ever dual memorabilia card ever released. Blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. And since the previous year, the only fire suit option you had in Press Pass was Dale Earnhardt, I wasn't a huge Dale Earnhardt fan at the time. So I was like, okay, that's cool to get a Dale Earnhardt. And if I would have gotten it, I would have just used it for trade or to sell or something. Or Actually, I, would, I was trying to do a set. And a set seems so far away in 1997, though. And it would have, I mean, it's a $350 card. So it would have been hard at, you know, 13 years old to keep a $350 card when I could have used the funds or the trade to get so much more stuff. Anyway. All that to be said, the double burner was incredible. First time to be able to get different drivers with diff uh, with the different drivers' fire suits besides Earnhardt. Earnhardt did have a card in here. Then you had Jeff Gordon, Michael Waltrip, Terry Labonte, and Rusty Wallace. The cool thing about Rusty Wallace, they had a fire suit from 1993 from his Miller Junior draft car. So it didn't match up with, you know, the fire suit relics were black and gold and white. And it didn't match up with his Miller Lite uniform that was on, and car that was on the card. So he was pictured in his Miller Lite uniform, which is a blue and white uniform. And then the car was blue and white. So anyway, this is a Michael Waltrip I just recently picked up. So that's really cool. So it would be, and I did pull, in 1997, I did pull a Michael Waltrip. Had a piece of, th uh, like, sewing. I think it had a piece of, like, stitching along it. And uh, that was a really cool card. And it was such an expensive box back then. I think it was like 80 or $90. And that was, I think, $10 more than the previous year. And you could get certified autographs out of here, which 97, I think, is one of the best NASCAR autograph sets that exist. 97, or 2000 Sign of the Times was incredible as well. And I really like the 97, so. This will be exciting. I've opened up one of these on my channel before, and I'll be excited to open up another one. So here are the odds. Authentic, so double burner, one every 432 packs. How many packs are in this box? 36 packs. This is a hobby box. So one every, what does it say? 432, so 36, so you got one every 12, so it was one every case. Crystal ball, you had a regular version, then a die cut, whereas the previous year they just had the die cut, which was cool. Top driver, so that was one every 18 packs. Die cut was one every 36, so you got one every box. Certified autograph, one every 72 packs. Emerald proof, which I'm doing that set for this year. One every 45 pack, so not even guaranteed one every box. Oil Slick, 40, so it was, Oil Slick, was, they were numbered to 100. Emerald Proof is numbered to 360. And Oil Slicks were numbered to 100, and you could get one of those every 96 pack. So one every three boxes. That's bananas. Silver Foil. Laminated car. It's just called a mirrors. It was one every one pack. So that's the parallel set, which those are beautiful. And the emerald proofs are on the mirror card too. So this is going to be an exciting box to open. I can't wait for this one. And then we have the Action Vision, which had the other. So in the 97 Press Pass VIP, you could get five of the nine. You could, you had a chance at hitting five of the nine sheet metal cards. You could get Jeff Gordon, Bill Elliott, Terry Labonte, Bobby Labonte, and Rusty Wallace out of the VIP. And then out of Action Vision, you could get 
Ernie Irvin, Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, and Dale Earnhardt. So this was a product that was released later in the year around the same time that the one-off production of M-Force was released the previous year. And this didn't do all that well, just like, just like M-Force. So all you had the opportunity to get in here was an autograph or a sheet metal card. And when I opened a box, I actually didn't open it on the channel. I opened it on my own and then I just showed what I got out of the box. You know, this was like two years ago and I pulled on and I opened it on my birthday. Pulled a multicolor Ernie Irvin sheet metal black and the orange and also a Sterling Marlin autograph. So that was a really great box. And you get 16 packs a box and I believe there are 12 cards in the set for the Action Vision set. And it's cool, I, you know, I can't send those to get autographed. They're not really autographable. And it'll still be cool. So we're basically just trying to be nice to build another set and or pull an autograph or a sheet metal card. That would be really great, especially Earnhardt uh, would be cool. Or just a multicolor of the other guys because I'd like to have a, you know, a full multicolored set. I have a couple sets of the sheet metal cards so let's see I got the odds down there but you can see and when you would rotate the card it would show Earnhardt going over the finish line Gordon pounding on the roof the car dropping off the jack and then going off like it was really cool and then there's a Bill Elliott one where he's flipping yeah right there at 96 Talladega or 97 Talladega I can't remember but he didn't flip he went up in the air and slammed back down I think he hurt his back so, where are the pods? Oh yeah, they're up here. Certified authentic. Whenever he... I can't even read that. Whenever he 160 packs, yeah, and it says, look for number sheet metal, number six, seven, eight, and nine. That's one every six, 160 packs. So that's one every 10 boxes. You get a sheet metal card. And then same thing with the autograph, one every 10 boxes. So you weren't chasing any other parallels or inserts or anything. You're just chasing, chasing a base set and then sheet metal or an autograph card. So... And I think these were like $100 a box back in the day. So, uh, I'm sure it cost a ton of money to produce the the action, you know, cards. So it was really, it, it was interesting. It was interesting. It was cool. It was unique. And then in 1998, they came out with Stealth as their, you know, fourth product at the end of the year. And they had race used glove cards in there because just going right into the 98, I do have the other 98 products. I just don't have enough of it to open uh, to you know be able to open a box and still have enough for me to sit and rub on and look at and feel happy when I see it uh, but I do have several of these which is the premium and the interesting thing about the 1998 products were in the press pass base the VIP and the premium they had a similar looking memorabilia card it was called the triple gear in the regular press pass issue you could get a rubber card, which I believe is numbered out of 250. And then out of the VIP, you could get a sheet metal card, which I believe was numbered out of 200. And then out of the premium, you could get a fire suit card, which I believe was numbered out of 150. And also randomly inserted throughout the entire product, you could get a card that had one of all three pieces of the relic. So it would have a piece of sheet metal, fire suit, and tire on it, and that was a redemption that you would send in, and there were only 33 of each of those created. Now I do have a couple of those cards, which I will show during the opening of this box. And this was, this was the last year that I was really interested, although not as interested as the previous years, because I kind of disconnected when they, they made the cards all so similar, and, the tire, the piece of tire was small and it just, I didn't, I preferred the designs from the previous years and it was almost like a little bit of a violation in my, in my eyes, in my collectible eyes and the way I process things. And also some other things were going on in my life where I was trying to wish away 
collecting NASCAR cards. That's a whole nother story for another day. And it's gonna be hard to tell what these odds are. So memorabilia card, one every 432 packs. Let's see, signings, which is the autograph card. One every 48 packs. Gold signature, one every 540 packs. Reflector, one every 24 packs. Flag chasers, um, one every 12 packs. Rivalries, one every six packs. Dale Earnhardt number zero card, Daytona 500 winner card, one every 432 packs. So that's cool. So we'll be looking for Earnhardt autograph. We'll be looking for a piece of fire suit card. We're looking for a Gordon autograph or a gold autograph. And also that Earnhardt number zero card and any of the other inserts. This is a really cool product. And this was the first year that Press Pass bought wheels, I believe. So the card the cards started to look a little different from this point on for a couple of years. And then they kind of went back to making cards that I thought were a little bit closer to the original vision. At least I remember from the 97 regular release. So anyway, so we'll get into all that. So that's all of the boxes that I will be opening over the next few weeks. And thank you for watching this video and just going over which ones I'll be opening because I'll be opening 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 boxes plus a partial Crown Jewels box and then some packs, which these packs I'm going to open right now. So let's see if we can get anything out of the 1996 Press Pass. Again, the hit out of these is going to be a rubber card. You got the Torkers, which is the blue parallel. Cool. Jeff Gordon, checkered flag. That's really cool. One out of six. Let's see, what were the odds on the checkered flag? Checkered flag, one every nine packs. So that's cool. If I pull a rubber card out of this, these individual packs after never being able to pull Jeff Bonin, that's cool, and Dave Marcus, that's a great one. Some of these are gonna be good for through the mail, but you can see how there's that white speckling. That's because the cards were stuck together. You can see the white speckling on Jeff Bodine. They, whoever stored these originally, they just weren't kept in the greatest conditions or and or they were just not you know they just didn't withstand the test of time i think it was because of the conditions they were kept in they were probably kept in like a garage or an attic or something you can see these are kind of all stuck together dick trickle got the torker ricky rudd phil warren dale plunk plank unfortunate unfortunate so most of these cards luckily that Jeff Gordon wasn't all that bad yeah you can tell that's unfortunate these just aren't even yeah, yeah there's not much we can do with those unfortunately Let's see. No one flex. I had to clear some space on my phone so let's get back to where we were Bobby Hamilton, Torker, Ron Hornaday, Mike Skinner. These ones are in better shape. Some of those will be good to send in to get autographed, like Larry McReynolds for that one. Get Larry Mack to autograph that one too. Mike McLaughlin, not so bad. Torker. Richard Petty, this will be a great one. I've gotten this autograph before and I'll send it in again. Jeff Green. Jason Keller. 
Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace. Oh, very good. Got an Earnhardt card. Maybe I'll send that over to Richard Childress. Get that one autographed. Last 96 press pass pack for today. Sweet. That, that's, oof, come on. Ugh. We'll have to see at the end how the Earnhardt is. It's not looking good. Oh man, what a tragedy. What a tragedy. Oh my goodness. There's the Michael Waltrip card that, I, card that I was mentioning, where he's just sitting in jeans and a polo in front of his cart, and then the Earnhardt's behind it, and it's not gonna, it's not looking good. Yep. That's unfortunate, and it's an Earnhardt card, so kind of just have to, you know, <clears throat> when you get these older packs and you don't know how someone stored them, like some of these boxes, I know the Zenith are really great. So the rest of them, not 100% sure. It's a chance you take when you buy older wax. And you could kind of tell the packs were like vacuum sealed together a little bit. So, all right, let's do, I'll open, let's open just three of these packs and then I'll do another video opening the, the rest of them. These are all numbered, I think. It's really cool. Yeah. Joe Nemechek, red. Really neat. Jeff Bodine, red. Car. And then a blue. Ricky Rudd. The unfortunate thing for, that, for these cards is some people out here in Dallas purchased all the excess inventory or the you know back stock or whatever it was that Pin, uh, Pinnacle had after they went out of business and I know there's one person specifically there could be others I'm sure that have a lot of the mirror golds uh, that they got for next to nothing from the close down so and that's just part of the bit part of the business you know that's just part of which what we're dealing with here so we really want to get a mirror gold, which is one every 37 packs. That would be really nice. Bobby Hamilton, Brett Bodine. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Brett Bodine. Let's see. Yep, Brett Bodine. And then a Robbie Gordon, blue, number to 1999. 1924 of 1999. All right, third pack. And then the rest will be coming in the next coming weeks. And I'll daisy chain the videos, meaning that after this video is done, next time I upload the video, next time I upload a video, the next video that you can click on will be the video that I'm making for the rest of these totally certified packs. And then at the end, it'll be, you know, probably the crown jewels or just whatever box I go into. So hopefully I'll make a playlist. Well, not hopefully I'll make a playlist, but I will make a playlist so that you'll be able to see all the old vintage NASCAR boxes that I'm opening from this group all in a row. Also, just while you're coming across each video, it'll show the next, the next one. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to click on the, on the next video in the series. So you got a Jeff Bodine gold QVC, a Bobby Labonte car, and then a Michael Waltrip mirror blue. 669 of 1999. Let's see if I got any interesting serial numbers, like anything really low or a door number or something. 2600. No, nothing that crazy. So. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. I'm excited to have the opportunity to open these boxes and share this great era of NASCAR collecting with you all. 
This is my favorite time frame of NASCAR. It's when I got into it. 1993 was when I got into it. And then started out with diecast and trading cards. And then after that, I took a break. And then I got back into it. And then I got out of it. And now I'm back into it. So this is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And if you like NASCAR cards like I do, hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel. Leave a thumbs up on my videos. Leave a comment. Chat with me. Uh, it helps. It helps. Not only do I like you know, talking to you guys, but I also uh, know that it helps when you hit the thumbs up or you hit the bell notification so that you're notified and I get the views and you get the engagement going. Because um, NASCAR cards is kind of on the bottom of the barrel right now as far as the collectibles go. And it's good as far as the people that have been collecting for a while. You can pick up things for for really good prices, really fair prices still compared to other things. And uh, I would like to see NASCAR get the respect uh, that it deserves and that it once had and I'd like to see it catch fire a little bit. So until the next video, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, bye.